Hello YouTube buddies and welcome to this week's video. So for this week's video I'm going to talk you through some products that I've recently bought from an online art shop um, but before we go any further with the video I want to just let you know I'm not sponsored at all uh, so as an artist and illustrator as I currently stand I'm not sponsored by any art shops or any art products. The things that I use are products that I use because I like the quality or because I've been recommended them by friends and other artists so just bear that in mind, I am not being paid to say this, um, but here it is. And I got this from a, a shop called Jackson's Art, so you can buy online, but I think they do also have a physical shop down in London, I think. Um, and before I go on, I just want to say I'm very impressed with how they packaged this. Now I did ask them not to package it with plastic, and they have fulfilled that request, so well done Jackson, thank you very much. But I think we should probably get on with having a look at what's in the bag and I'll talk you through what I bought, why I bought it, and a little bit more. Let's go. Okay. So first, out of the bag, is these. Those of you in the know will know that these are watercolour pans. They also sell them in half pan size, so this is a full pan. Um, I've never had a full pan before, I've always used half size pans. I got these because I want to set up a watercolour, hmm, <laughs> not a watercolour set, um, well kind of. I'll start again, I'll, I'll explain myself. So I've, I've already got, let me find it, so I've already got a travel watercolour set from um, Windsor & Newton. So these are watercolours that came with the set, I bought it all as one. Um, and I found this really useful when I go away. Oh, I need to clean it, I can't actually get that out. Oh, I'm going to break my nails. Uh, there's another thing in there that slides out um, and you can use it like this to mix your colours on. I found it really useful when I go on holiday. But I'd like to be able to choose my own colours. I like these, these are great. but. Um, uh, I've got a set of gouache, 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 I say gouache, whatever you say, whatever. Um, gouache is like watercolour, sorry I'll start again. Gouache is a watercolour but it's a highly pigmented watercolour so you can overlay light colours on top of dark. Um, and I want to start getting into these for my illustrations a bit more so I've decided to buy some pans that I can fill up with my own colours and for that let me just move this across so to put those pans in I've got this so this is Jackson's own brand uh, watercolour what would you call it? travel palette a little thing underneath there so that's when you when you're holding it you can put your thumb in there so you don't drop it it opens out so you've got two sides to um, mix your paints onto and then this section here is where you put your pans so they just click in Et voila! This is designed as a 12 full pan set but as you can see if you squish them all up you can actually fit two more pans in there but it would be harder to get these out um, if you wanted to clean them. So I might just leave it as it is for now and then if I do buy any more gouache that I want to add to it I can buy another, another full pan, another two full pans and I can just add more colours to it. But this is going to be full of these and we'll do that together later on but first I need to show you what else I got from Jackson's Art. So 
so you can see I've got myself a little investment of pencils. <laughs> so these were recommended by um, someone I follow on Instagram called Emma Carlyle. I'll put, pop her details down below. She's an artist and illustrator um, based in the UK. And she was showing a kind of studio haul of things that she bought um, and things that she likes to use. And she showed, she, she was showing how these, these pencils worked. I should probably name them. These are the Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils. They're a light fast pencil. And when Emma Carlyle was showing us how they worked, they just looked so creamy, so intense in colour, that I asked her how, like, what kind of, what they were like to work with, and she said they were great. So I've invested it in a selection. Now the colours that I've used, don't laugh at me, I know they're really boring colours, but these are the colours that I need to complete some of the pages for my upcoming children's book. So I got what I needed, um, to, to try them out basically because they are quite an investment they're three pounds per a pencil um, but I've had a sneaky try out of them already and they seem really good but uh, I, I'd like to have a little bit more of a try so I'm going to get some watercolour paper that I've just got lying around spare from, from illustrating the book and I'm going to um, just try out a couple of bits if that's okay some watercolour paper that I had um, just tested some colour on earlier. Not for this, but just I've just had this piece of paper lying around for ages. Right, so let's start with the greens. So the colours I've got are Spring Green, which is number 470, and I've got Moss Green, which is 225. So let's try Spring Green first. Those of you who know me will know that I am not a pencil user at all. Uh, ooh. The colour's quite intense, it, it, it overlays quite dark colours quite nicely. Excellent. That's the spring green, let's try the moss green. Yeah, I'm not a pencil connoisseur at all, I don't really like drawing with coloured pencils, but when you're illustrating a children's book they are quite good for just adding extra detail on top of gouache, on top of watercolour, um, so where you want something like a crisp piece of detail. Lovely. So this one is the uh, Burned Ochre in 077. What I like about these so far is the consistency of colour. The pencils that I use at the moment are the Derwent Artist pencils. And, you know, when you're doing something like this, like a block of colour, they're really intense for the first kind of little bit where the pencil's sharp, but then when the pencil starts to round off, you've got to press really hard and you end up damaging the paper. Look how intense that is over the colour. You might enjoy using these. So this is Payne's Grey, uh, eight, oh, thirty percent. Need my glasses on. Payne's Grey, thirty percent, number five oh four. Ooh, that's nice. Look how they overlay. Yeah, they do overlay a little bit. Nice. really easy without you, you can get lots of colour without having to damage the paper. I'll do this one first. So this is the raw umber 548. Something hard in the lead of this one so it's scratching the paper a little bit but hope you sometimes find with pencils that there is often sometimes you get like little hard nubbins that scratch a little bit and then after you've used them for a little bit they pop out. So I'll, I'll give this a good going to try and get rid of that scratchy bit. There we go, it's gone already. That's it. Hmm. Yes, 
there we go it's popped out um, let's see how it overlays really well nicely and then a classic black zero zero nine so intense just a comparison I'm going to get the Derwent art pencils just to show you how how different they are so let me try and find similar colors it's got to be a number I know peach green green where's the black I bet they work really well now <laughs> so these are the Doe and Artist pencils can you see how can you see how faded the colour is and patchy in comparison it looks that looks like a grey rather than a black um, so there's a green it doesn't overlay quite as well maybe I'm being a bit unfair to the dermots actually yeah maybe they do overlay okay but they just leave a patchier patchier finish like you can see where all the lines have gone there you can see my first line was that bit the first line second line was that was that bit third line was that bit maybe i'm just trying to convince myself i don't like them it's inconsistent color basically you've got to press quite hard to get consistent color you see what i mean there can't you on that one you can see the different bits that i've i've colored Whereas with this one, let's compare it. You can see the difference between the black and the black there. So I'm really pleased that I got these um, Caran d'Ache pencils. Sorry, Derwent, but you're just going to have to be for practice. But what I'm going to do now is fill my gouache travel palette with my Winsor & Newton designer gouache which I really like working with and this is the kind of work I've been doing with it recently I say recently I mean illustrating the children's book has um let me just focus you illustrating the children's book has kind of taking its toll a little bit on my time schedule so I haven't really added to these as much as I wanted to but these are it's a sketchbook full of treasures that I found on my walks um, and I, I really enjoyed doing these um, it's a style that I really like so I'd like to get back on that like when I'm on holiday doing landscapes or you know even finding treasures and documenting them um, it's going to be so much easier being able to just take the travel set rather than my whole palette. I like this one. This is the last one that I've done. That was when the autumn was starting. That was months ago. So I really need to get back to this. So we should really get on with the illustration process for the book. By the way, guys, the illustrations for the uh, upcoming children's book have all been finished now. So I just need to get on with editing those. And... Um, I'm going to have to start looking into some kind of Kickstarter campaign too because even though I won't need to do that for the book it is something that I want to I want to look into because I think it will be a fun way of getting people involved. Um, let me know what you think about a Kickstarter campaign for a children's colouring book. Yeah I've never done a Kickstarter before so I think it will be very very interesting. Okay let's get on to opening some of these gouache. So what colours do I have? Indigo, permanent deep green, rose, Bengal rose, neutral grey, brilliant green, 
Windsor Green. Oh, I've been going for my greens when I was ordering these. Thalo Blue. Burnt Umber. Flesh Tint. I hate that. I mean, how many people have flesh that colour anyway? I mean, I suppose the closest would be Caucasian like me. And my skin isn't that colour. Anyway, don't get me started. Uh, and Naples Yellow Deep. And then from another set that I got, which were the Royal Talons, I've got a black, black intense and I've got a white somewhere. Let me find my white. Because they're always a good combo to have in any gouache set. There we go, white. So let's fill these bad boys up. The initial process now these will eventually lodge into there and they will dry let me show you what they dry like so this is my ceramic I think it's like a serving platter that I got yeah it's from the charity shop but it's really good for mixing gouache um, and that is a solid amount of paint I mean it's still tacky but it does dry and then they reactivate when you add water so they're a good one to use in a travel set like this because even though they are wet now and if I turn this upside down they dribble everywhere leave this for a little while and they will dry and I can put it away in my drawer uh, until I go away on holiday but first I'm going to get a piece of watercolour paper I'm going to do a quick watercolour swatch just so I know what colours I've got in there and what they look like when they're on the paper Okay. When you're working with gouache, to make sure that you don't, um, you know, contaminate any of the colours, it's a good idea to have a lot of water so you can clean your brush. Um, but before you actually do this with a fully loaded paintbrush, it's a good idea to wipe it on a piece of paper, dip, wipe, dip, wipe, and then, <laughs> and then do your big clean. Personal preference. I mean, do what you want, but that's just my the tip that I've found. Let me get a little bit more paper. So I'm going to write down the names first.
So while that's drying, I just wanted to come on here and thank you for all of your support. Whether you support me financially through Patreon or through my folksy shop, or whether you support me non-financially through subscribing to my Instagram and my Facebook and my YouTube, uh, I just wanted to come on and say thank you. You make my job possible. Without you, I wouldn't be able to live the life that I'm living and do the job that I love. Um, talking about the job that I love, you may already know that I am illustrating and writing my first children's book. That is well on the way. So all of the pages have been finished now and I just need to start editing all the pages and things together. So it won't be very long. If you want to keep abreast of what I'm up to regarding my books, I have just created my very first official.com. Uh, so it's www.emmawoodthorpe.com. Dot com. I'll pop the link down below. So if you're interested in my auth the, the author side of my life, uh, which hopefully will be growing and growing and growing, then head there and keep abreast of all the information that I pop out there. I do have a blog there which is related to all things booky and authory and book illustration-y, uh, so it'd be lovely if you could subscribe, but don't feel any pressure to, you don't have to at all. Um, and you don't need to subscribe to read my blog, so you can just go there and have a little read if you want to. I'm going to stop rabbiting because I do talk a little bit too much. But I'm going to leave this video there. I think I've probably overwhelmed myself <laughs> with all the paint and everything that's on my desk. So I'm going to have a bit of a tidy up. and I'm definitely going to wash my hands because I've got paint all over them. But I'm going to leave it there. So until next week, thanks for watching. Bye bye.